Hi! Yo guys, what is going on? Blossom is back and welcome back to another episode of Top Drives and another episode of What Can You Get From That Pack? Today's packing question is indeed the silver screen carbon fiber. Let's freaking go. One of the most beautiful carbon fibers in the game because if you open the aluminum one, you got the 1969 Dodge Charger on the thumbnail of the pack. And of course, the 1969 Charger was going to be the thumbnail of this video. Let's freaking go. The most beautiful car in the game. But anyway, I'm going to be uh, basically judging and tier listing all of the ultra rares and above and first time ever I'm actually putting in the super rares as well so I am actually judging the super rares and above why I'm adding super rares in here is because well number one you can get it from you know the carbon fiber pack but number two it's a very very small pack there are only about 14 ultras seven epics and three legendary so I decided to throw in the other super rares as well but I think it's pretty self-explanatory most of these super rares are gonna end up in the lower tier so let me review this pack obviously you guys know the ranks right so we have hog garbage that's the worst of the worst we have pernicious ulcer which is bad we have frequent provider which is average we have daily driver which are you know really good cars but they're just not perfect and then of course we have a dirk heiser which is the best of the best most of the time but this time we have a new Top rank, okay? Don't add me. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. The best car in the history of the world. Don't add me. This decision is final. The 1969 Dodge Charger. I mean, honestly, guys, if you don't know by now, this is my favorite car of all time. It's been my favorite car for 11, 12 years now, and I'm going to be taking this to my grave, okay? But anyway, I'm gonna review the Super Screen Carbon Fiber if it's worth it to open or not. Now, obviously, when it comes to these legendary challenges, all of these cars are going to be useful, okay? So I wanna put that out there. All of these cars are probably gonna be useful for the challenge. So I'm gonna be ranking these cars in a general sense. How useful are they in the multiplayer scene, in the single player scene, in the Yellowbird campaign, in this mode campaign, uh, and of course, in clubs, and also other challenges that you might see in the future, okay? that makes sense nice uh, so obviously it'll be a nice little review if you want to open this pack just for opening the pack uh, you know just for opening packs sake but anyway let's get into it hey yo real quick I just want to say that we are in the final stretch boys the final stretch to 10,000 subscribers just I think like uh, 990 subscribers to go so let's get 10,000 if you're watching right now and you haven't clicked that big red button please what are you doing please help me thank you anyway let's get back we are starting off with the AMC Javelin AMX. Okay, so this is a pretty interesting one. I would say the AMC Javelin AMX is a dragster because it's a low 0 to 60. And it's going to be very useful in the challenge because when you look at all of the super airs, this thing has like one of the lowest 0 to 60s. 5.6. I mean, everything else is what? 6.6. 6.1, 6.5, 6.4, 6.5. So 5.6 is low, and it even has standard tires. Now, the AMC Javelin has no MRA. And when I mean no MRA, I mean like zero, which is weird for an American muscle car. It's 49.49. Less than 50 MRA, okay? As a low 0 to 60, the top speed is okay, but when it has no MRA and no handling, yeah, it's hot garbage. Um, obviously, like I said, gonna be useful in the challenge, but I'm judging this pack and these cars in a general sense. Now, moving on is the Audi Quattro. Outdated picture from Top Drives Club. There's a newer, nicer picture in the game now. This one's actually pretty good. The Audi Quattro is just a very versatile car, okay? It goes over 80 handling when you max it out. I think it's about 82. Medium ground clearance, four wheel drive. The zero to 60 is respectable, but of course it also has no MRA. 50.11 MRA, but at the same time, it's a lot of little niches that you can get in the Quattro uh, because it's medium, because it's four wheel drive, because it's performance tires, and because it's very low in RQ, only 40 RQ. It's a car that I use very often in clubs and even in German challenges. And you can even use it in the Yellowbird campaign for the German section. So. The the Quattro is actually a very useful car, a great little bargain, I would give it frequent provider. Moving on now is the Cadillac, the RQ49 Cadillac, I believe the CTS, 55 MRA. All these cars that we've been seeing so far, really atrocious MRA. It's a saloon, it's medium ground clearance, it's standard tires, but it just doesn't handle as well as some of the other cars in its competition, and um, I mean, it has no MRA, and it's very heavy, coming in at 1,751 kilograms. It's a pernicious ulcer. Um, there are a little bit of times where you can use it, it's not completely 
completely useless, but it is verging on hot garbage. I'm gonna give it a pernicious ulcer. It's a card that I don't use often. If I want to use the standard tire Super Air, uh, even for American, I'm gonna use the Ford Flex. If it's not American, I'm gonna use the Subaru Levork. And if you're not Blossom, if you're not me, you're probably gonna use the Volvo 850, right? So the CTS, eh. You know, and even when it comes to rear-wheel drive standard tire cars, I wouldn't be using the CTS. I'd rather use the Chrysler Crossfire instead. Uh, moving on now is the Ford Explorer. Now, uh, this is the first car where I think I know where it was featured in. This was in Black Widow. Uh, if I can find a picture of this car being used, I'll put it here. But this was in Black Widow. No MRA. I, I mean, you don't expect an MRA from a car like this, but it's 39.3 if you want to know. Uh, it doesn't handle. It has four-wheel drive. It has all surface tires. That's really all it brings to the table, though. Um, the 0 to 60 is very very slow the top speed isn't very high it's hog garbage uh, moving on is the GMC Acadia now once again the GMC Acadia is a car that I never use 62.12 MRA and 71 handling is just atrocious to be honest it's only two more handling than the Ford Explorer and it's so much more expensive than 6RQ to be completely honest with you I'm also gonna put it in hog garbage if I want to use an all-surface tire four-wheel drive car around that mark I'd rather use something from Japan, like a Mitsubishi Outlander or a Mitsubishi, uh, what's the other one called? I, I forgot what the name was, it's RQ44, um, yeah, I can't remember the name, but honestly, they're just better um, Japanese SUVs out there. And when it comes to American SUVs for the Supra category, yeah, I guess the GMC Acadia is alright. But how often do you actually need American all-surface tire cars only? It's quite often that you need American off-roaders, but if that's the case, and if it's even super air, if it's limited to super air, you would want to use, if it's just an off-roader setting, you want to use the four-wheel drive off-road tire uh, Bronco Windsor. Uh, so I think it's called the Bronco Windsor? It's a Windsor. It's the Windsor V8, I think it's called, the RQ44. Like, what I'm saying is that the GMC Acadia, I have it maxed, and I think I've only raised it about five times. Hog garbage. Next up is the Honda, the Honda S2000. This is a pretty interesting one. Handles quite well, right? 80 handling, and the MRI is actually strong. Very strong for a Japanese car, 81.79. So good handling, good MRA, but what really brings the Honda down is the 0 to 60. The 0 to 60 is atrocious. 6.5, that's a 0 0.1 difference to the Audi Quattro, and it even makes it slower than the CTS. It, it's, it's honestly a very, very disgraceful MRA. Uh, sorry, very, very disgraceful, disgraceful 0 to 60 on the Honda, but it handles quite well. Uh, it's a lightweight car, coming at 1,260 kgs, and the MRA is oh, good, actually, for a Japanese car, 81.79. Now, we move on to the G. Jag. The Jag XK8, 68 MRA, um, and that's really all it is. It's quite heavy as well, 1,653 uh, kilograms. Uh, the, uh, the handling is okay for 70, uh, for 42 RQ. Uh, it has, um, what is it, 87 handling when you max it out, 323. That being said though, the 0 to 60 is kind of just eh. The top speed is, you know, it's quite high, but the MRA isn't good. It's a bit of a hybrid that just loses everywhere in the worst case scenario, in the worst case possible. So it's hot garbage in my opinion. Uh, the next one is gonna go to the Lotus Esprit. Now the Lotus Esprit is an interesting one. It's a very lightweight car. Once again, very bad zero to 60. It's the same as the Honda, but at least it's two RQ cheaper. And the MRA in the Lotus Esprit is okay. It's 78.4, so it's only three less MRA compared to the Honda S2000. In fact, these two cars are very similar. The Honda and the Esprit, very, very similar. In fact, I'm inclined to actually move the Honda down. 80 handling and 79 handling, the, 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 uh, like handling plays a massive part, right? This thing is gonna hit 87 handling. Uh, and this thing is going to hit 89 handling. So it's a one handling difference uh, stock, but it'll be a two handling difference when you max it out. So because of that difference, I will actually put the Honda S2000 a tier above the Esprit. The Esprit is still light, the MRA is still good, but the 0 to 60 is weak. It has no top speed. And the handling, once again, is just, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's just, eh, so so. Uh, moving on is the Nissan X Trail. The Nissan X Trail 54.19 MRA. It's a very, very light SUV. Now, I know that every time I do these kind of videos, there's always someone that asks, what is MRA? It's basically Basically, mid-range acceleration is how fast the car accelerates from 60 to 100. The X-Trail is a pretty interesting one, actually. I'm going to give it frequent provider. It handles quite well. Uh, I mean, it's, most Japanese SUVs just handle well anyway. I mean, it's the same RQ as the Acadia, and it handles five times more. Also, what makes this really special is that it's very, very light. Uh, 1,415 kilograms is very, very light for an SUV with four-wheel drive and also surface tires. I'll give it frequent provider. I would say it's a pretty high frequent provider as well. Uh, moving on now is the Dodge Ram. Ram Charger. All right, okay. MRA. You want to guess? You want to guess what the MRA is in the Ram Charger? It's 26. 
26.21, okay? The zero to 69.4, no handling. The thing that makes this special is it has off-road tires. So the only reason why it's not haul garbage is because it has off-road tires, but the on-paper stats leave nothing to be desired. I mean, 59 handling, um, you know, 26 MRA. Uh, it's, it's just, it's a very, very slow behemoth, but the off-road tires really bump it up. So I'll give it pernicious ulcer. Next one is the Volvo C70 T5. It is a surprisingly heavy car. It's definitely haul garbage. 52 MRA, and it comes in at 1,711 kilograms. That is incredibly heavy for a freaking convertible, bro. Like, that is saloon. That is saloon weight. It's it's actually ridiculous. Also, the uh, the handling isn't very good. Um, so because of that, it's going to be haul garbage. Now we move on to ultra rare. So uh, first one's going to be Baby Driver Impreza. I'm going to give that frequent provider. Um, it's a pretty lightweight car, 1,285 kgs. MRA is, you know, is average for a Subaru, 62.3. 82 handling is actually good for a four-wheel drive medium ground clearance car and the 0 to 60 is okay so it's a pretty average car i would give it frequent provider uh, next one is actually the acura nsx the acura nsx i'm gonna give Dirk kaiser you can get a lot of value out of this car okay 74 mra amazing handling one of the highest if not the highest handling um american ultra hitting 9.5 it basically shares the same stats as the fiat 030 but it's a little bit more heavy that being said though the nsx isn't even heavy okay 1410 kilograms it's okay it's not light i wouldn't call that light but it's definitely not heavy either it's 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 good it's it's a good it's a good weight it's a healthy weight okay um 86 handling is fantastic on this the mra is strong the top speed is respectable the zero to 60 is respectable it's a very respectable car i'll give it their kaiser definitely it's going to be one of those key cars in the challenge but also very useful in clubs and multiplayer events and uh you know in the u.s you know challenge section of the yellowbird campaign uh moving on now is the acura rdx this thing is absolutely hot garbage i mean to put things into comparison bro it has less handling than the nissan x-trail and it's heavier it's a very heavy car 1783 kilograms 75 handling only it has a low zero to 60 okay that's nice but the mra is 53.35 so there's no you know there's no what's the word um culmination uh, of a combination there's no there's no uh, uh harmony <laughs> I mean, what's the word i'm looking for there, i can't i think i can't think of it I, I can't think of it but anyway the handling is atrocious okay it's a very heavy car um definitely not worthy of rq63 it's an outdated picture it's 64 the picture but 63 in game it's it's just trash next one is a bentley mulzan now the bentley mulzan as much as i like to crap on bentley's the bentley mulzan is actually strong uh 90 handling when you max it out medium ground clearance high top speed and the mra is very average it's 77 now if that was like if the mra on the bentley was more of like 80 82 it would definitely be dirk heiser 77 is just slightly off the mark now what brings the bentley down i mean it, it goes without saying it's an incredibly heavy car 2685 kilograms i mean that's to be expected from a bentley uh, but but besides that, medium ground clearance, uh, decent handling, decent 0-60, to 60, definitely is a daily driver in my opinion. One of the better Bentleys out there, the butter, as I like to call it, right? Blocky and yellow and rich in flavor. Not like I know what that tastes like. Uh, moving on is the Cadillac CTS Coupe. The Cadillac CTS Coupe, definitely the Kaiser, right? Uh, very, very good handling. 86 handling when you max it out. Four-wheel drive, standard tires, medium ground clearance. Uh, that is the combination that you want. MRA isn't strong, 61.38, but MRA isn't really what you expect from a four-wheel drive an entire car anyway. Very strong car. I do like the Cadillac CTS and it's a very useful car in game. Moving on is the Cadillac Escalade EXT. Yeah, that's hot garbage, bro. Um, this thing, I mean, it doesn't handle, first of all. The only thing that it has going for it is a relatively low 0-60, to 60, I would say. But outside of that, yeah, nothing, nothing really. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, you want to use a dragster SUV, you go the Trailblazer SS. Uh, the Escalade EXT doesn't really handle, no top speed. The MRA is 69, <laughs> very nice. And it's a very heavy car coming in at 2,650. Looks really cool, but that's that's about it. Uh, moving on now is the Chevrolet Camaro SS, obviously from Transformers, right? Bumblebee. Uh, definitely is a daily driver. Once again, really good MRA, actually. 80 MRA. It's surprisingly quite heavy, coming in at uh, 1,751 kilograms, but it handles well and it has a low 0 to 60. I would say that this and the NSX are going to give you a lot of value, but I would just give a slight edge to the NSX because although the Camaro has that 0 to 60 boost, I would, uh, sorry, that MRA boost, I'd rather go in the handling on the NSX. 
Not to mention that the NSX is a lot lighter as well by over 300 kilograms. Moving on now is the Dodge Magnum SRT4. Pernicious ulcer. I mean, the only reason why it's not hot garbage is because it has medium ground clearance and it has an estate niche. Besides that, the 0 to 60 is quite weak, the handling is quite weak, the top speed is okay, but the MRI isn't strong. 72? I mean, yeah, 72 is good MRA for a Subaru, but it's bad MRA for a Dodge, man. So, unfortunately, it's pernicious ulcer. Not hot garbage because it has a little bit to offer on the table. Next is the Nissan 370Z Nismo. The Nissan 370Z Nismo, I'm gonna give it their Kaiser. Now, I know what you're thinking, Blossom, how can you give the Nismo their Kaiser but not the Camaro because it's 5.1 to 4.6? Am I really skewing it that hard on, on the handling? Here's the thing. The Nismo handles incredibly well. 86 handling. The reason why I'm putting it higher than the Camaro as well, and I think this car was featured in Fast and Furious, uh, is because it's 59 RQ. You are getting more handling than the Camaro for a much cheaper price. That is more of a bargain, and because of that, I have to honor that. It is actually a very useful car to use. One of the best rear-wheel drive Japanese Japanese cars to use in my opinion. Uh, I do use it quite often and it really will save you. When you want to get into the Nismo Championship once you finish a Yellowbird, the Nismo 370Z Nismo, uh, the, Niz the, the Nissan 370Z Nismo is going to be one of your most used cars in the Nismo campaign. Um, so it's a very, very useful car. Where did it go? Where did it? Oh, <laughs> no, you're not that good, Nismo. Definitely the Kaiser, though. Very, very useful car. Uh, moving on is the R33. This is an interesting one. Where am I going to put the R33? Four-wheel drive. It has really good stats, uh, decent handling, but it's basically a worse version of the Ford RS200, right? So I would give it Daily Driver. You can still get a lot of value out of it, but there are better cars out there to use. I'm sorry, Cord. I'm sorry. I know you want me to put it as the Kaiser. Hey, hey, on the good side, the Nismo 370Z, that's the Kaiser. And, and still, Daily Driver is a really good rank to put it in. Alright, uh, last but not least, oh sorry, not last but not least, we have four more Ultras to go actually. I thought the Porsche was last. Uh, we do have the uh, RQ53 Porsche coming in at 1,350 kilograms of 72.08 MRA, 5.40 to 60, 82 handling. I gotta say, I mean, it's a very high pernicious ulcer. I would say it's either a high pernicious ulcer or a low frequent provider. The only reason why I'm not going to give it frequent provider is because I don't have it and I don't use it and I don't need it. The only time I do need it is in this challenge. <laughs> um, so. It's funny because this Porsche is one of the few cars that kind of, you know, uh, kept its tag from the first silver screen. Obviously, this is silver screen two, uh, but a couple cars kept its tag. The R33 was in silver screen one, and now it is here again in season uh, in season two, basically. Uh, and the 911 is the other one. So it was in uh, silver screen one, now it's in silver screen two. I didn't need it in the first one. I might need it in the second one, though. It's a decent RQ53, I would say. It's a bit of a hybrid, but really what makes it stand out is that at least the handling isn't under average. It's, it's okay for RQ53. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's a car that you don't really need to use. There are a lot of better options out there. So because of that, it's the pernicious ulcer tag. Uh, moving on are the Volvos. Oh my goodness. These Volvos are not good, okay? So the first one is the XC90 V8. I mean, straight off the bat, I'm going to give it hot garbage. It doesn't handle, man. It doesn't handle. 72 MRA, though, okay? I'll give it that. 72 MRA, so what? You want to use it as a dragster? It's a 7.80 to 60. It's still not very strong. Um, but yeah, 72 MRA. Uh, as far as SUVs go, it's actually quite strong. But at the end of the day, it doesn't handle. Top speed isn't very high. You're not gonna get a lot of value out of it. It's the same thing for the Volvo V40R. It's not a very good car either. The handling is good. The handling is good, but the MRA is very, very weak. 61, it's a very heavy car, 1,733 kilograms, and the 0-60 to is very, very low. It has an estate niche, it is medium, it is four-wheel drive, and it handles quite well. So I will give it pernicious ulcer. There's a little bit of tags going for it, but to be completely honest, I do not use the V70R, which I call Palam, in honor of Android Fanatic, but yeah, no, it's not a very good ultra, unfortunately. And it's the same that goes, it's the same story for the S60 T6 all-wheel drive. It just, it's it's horrible. Honestly, like, I even want to give this hog garbage, and I'm going to. Yes, I get it. It has traction control. It has ABS, but it's really heavy, right? 1,756 kilograms. 71 MRA on that isn't very strong, but the main thing that brings the Volvo down is 77 handling for an RQ60 is depressing. Absolutely depressing. Definitely hog garbage. Now we move on to the Epic.
picks. I mean, let's get the hot garbage ones out of the way, right? We got the Bentley, uh, and we have, well, we got two Bentleys, honestly. Both of them are hot garbage. Uh, let me go through the MRA. So the Continental GT, 76.92 from MRA, uh, 76 MRA. This Continental GT was uh, featured in Cars 2. Uh, and then we have the Continental Flying Spurs, 73, uh, 8.84 MRA. They both don't handle, they're both very heavy. Um, the the uh, Flying Spurs, 2,475 kilograms. The Continental GT is 2,385 kilograms. Once again, they might be useful for the challenge, but in an overall setting, Jesus Christ, they're all garbage. Uh, moving on to Calyx CT6. Calyx CT6, for sure is Dirk Kaiser, okay? It has a respectable MRA for a four-wheel drive medium ground clearance standard tire car coming in at 70 well, 71.91, uh, sorry, 71.19, and it handles very, very well. It has a low zero to 60 as well as an average top speed, and it handles very, very well. 87 handling when you max it out, uh, four-wheel drive standard tires. 88 handling if you go two, three, three. Very, very strong car. One of the best standard tire cars in the game and the best American standard tire car in the game. Uh, if you don't need to use it for drags, because then you would use the 16. Uh, then we have the Camaro ZL1. The Camaro ZL1, I would say, is a frequent provider. It's very average. Handling is okay. I would say it's actually on the lower end because you can see that there are ultra rares that are already capable of hitting 86. So I would say the ZL1 is, 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 is just, you know, it's okay. 80 MRA, very average. It's a heavy car, man. It's 1,869 kilograms. Jesus. Uh, the 0 to 60 is low and the top speed is high. So it's like a, a pseudo dragster, but like you don't want to use it for the drags because you have the Hellcat. The Hellcat. Hellcat is a daily driver. 88 MRA, right? Very, very low 0 to 60, 3.6 0 to 60, and the top speed 199 miles per hour. Now that is a dragster. Uh, moving on is the Super Impressive WX STI. That could be pernicious, also. The only reason why it doesn't haul garbage is because four wheel drive medium gun clearance and it handles quite well. So there's a little bit of niche going for it, but honestly, it's one of those cars where whenever I do a garage review, I'm just like, all right, you gotta fuse it. Like, if you got that, you're not a Japanese specialist, just fuse it away. Uh, next one is gonna go to the Volvo S60R all wheel drive. Pretty interesting one, this one. Uh, four wheel drive, medium ground clearance. The handling is so so. MRA is so. No, MRA, sorry, I thought the MRA was 74 for a second. I was looking at the wrong line. The MRA on this is 65.48. Nah, this is hot garbage. Uh, it's, an, it's, it's the epitome of RQ65. It really is. Uh, now we move on to legendaries. First one is the Cadillac. Now, let me talk about the good things about the Cadillac CTSV Sport Wagon. Number one, it's an estate. Number two, it's medium. Number three, it has 102 MRA. That's it though. Handling is bad. The zero to 60 is atrocious. And the top speed I would say is relatively high. I mean, to be fair, I would probably give it Provider. I was thinking about giving a daily driver, but when you think about it, I'm thinking about all the times where I, I there's an estate event, right, in the multiplayer scene. I never use the Cadillac. I know it has 102 MRA, but the thing is, this is a car that you can only get value of if you max it out. And how how badly do you want to max out an ATRQ Legendary? It's one of those cars where it'll be good if it's maxed, but if it is not maxed, then it's gonna be useless. Um, yeah, great MRA, high top speed. The zero to 60 is bad though. I mean, when you think about it, the Challenger is 0.4 uh, quicker to zero to 60. And also when it comes to the estate meta, you want to use the Audi RS6 event. That is the car that you want to use. I, every time there's an estate event I always try and stay away from the CTSV uh, because it's very expensive and it's not a good bargain because like I said you only get value out of it if you can max it out so it's a very expensive investment and it's not worth it in my opinion um, yes good MRA yes it's medium but the fact that you have to max it out for it to be useful really brings it down. It's a frequent provider. And then the last two is the McLaren 12C as featured in Cars 2 and the Koenigsegg or Blossegg as featured on my channel. Obviously Blossegg is in here because it's famous from the pool from my channel, right? Totally because it wasn't in like, you know, Need for Speed the movie or what. No, 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 no. It's because it's Blossegg. It's because it's Blossegg. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But yeah, those two cars are absolutely amazing, man. You got the McLaren, right? The McLaren 101 MRA, 95 handling stock, a very lightweight car. And they have the currently second like Gera R. Once again, you know, handling is amazing. 0 to 60 is low. The top speed is absolutely bonkers. And the MRA on the Gera R is 97.4. It's also quite light coming in at 1,435 kilograms. So in the end, this is my assessment, I would say, of the silver screen pack. So you'll be seeing this challenge go on for about, what, I think like maybe a month, maybe two, three weeks, something like that. And this is what I think is the pack. Well, this is what I think it looks like. So should you open it? Should you open it? I can't speak. Should you open it? 
<laughs> should you what am i talking about um should you open it um honestly it's not a good pack in my opinion there's a lot of hot garbage that's the thing there is a lot of hot garbage yes there's a decent amount of you know top tier cars uh ranging from ultra one epic and two legendaries but to be completely honest with you if you don't want to go for the demon or well honestly like the cards that you can choose, the Demon, the Aerial Atom, and the Lamborghini, it's basically Demon or two wrong answers, right? The Demon is a great prize car. Amazing. Take it from me. I'm an owner of the prize car, dude. I have almost 8,000 races, 95% win ratio on it. But of course, take that with a grain of salt because the Demon, obviously, I'm heavy biased to it. It's one of my favorite, you know, cards in the game. And also my demon is maxed. Um, but that being said, though, it's still very useful. One of the best American drags. There's definitely the best American quarter mile. Um, but, uh, yeah, I would say that if you want to go for, you know, silver screen, if you want to go for the demon, then obviously you would have to go for the pack. But in terms of opening this pack in a general sense, like let's say that, you know, you already have, you know, like, like me, you already have the cars, so you don't need to open the pack. But you kind of want to open it just for opening a pack's sake. I don't think it's worth it. Der Kaiser, yeah, there's some really good cars in here, but there's a lot. There's a genuine lot of hot garbage. Even when you take away all the super airs, you're still getting, like, how many hot garbage? Four ultra airs uh, and, and three epics? That is... Yeah, this is a pretty high chance. There's also a lot of pernicious ulcers in there as well. So unfortunately, I don't think that this is a very good pack to open. Out of the three new tags that we got, right? We got Silver Screen, we got Year of the Tiger, um, and we got Two Tone as well. The one that I'm excited for the most is Two Tone. The Two Tone pack. That one genuinely looks good. Like, I'm going to open that. I can tell you right now. Those Porsches, the Bugatti Veyron, the Bluebird. Ooh, that is a good pack. I can tell you right now. But anyway, that's the silver screen rated. Let me know what you think in the, in the comments below. Obviously, the best thing that you can get from the pack is the 1969 Charger, for sure. So, if anything, the the most like the most value that you can get from a silver screen pack, just open the aluminum one so you can get the Charger. Anyway, hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe, wash your hands, and blossom out. Peace. Bro, this song just makes me so happy. <laughs> me too. Imagine being Asian in the 50s, looking nippy, leather jacket, looking sleek, look like Presley, look so deadly, got a jetbox back at home, feeling jazzy, turn it on and play it slow, like the movies with the ladies. They so fine. Imagine being Asian in the 50s, looking nippy, leather jacket, looking sleek, look like Presley, look so deadly, got a jetbox back at home, feeling jazzy, turn it on and play it slow, like the movies with the ladies. They so fine. Sit back, relax in my Bonneville Pontiac Hold tight all night, cruise to Jacksonville Atlantic Blonde hair, don't care, look like Leslie Brooks Pin up girls everywhere with the drop that looks Swing it side to side as we slow down to the night When I'll hold your perfect hand and take you out just for a ride We'll share milkshakes at the diner and rebel at every hour We 